So, hello, Vanessa. Uh, I'm very happy to have you here uh, and uh, to be able to talk with you, finally. Um, and let's, uh, I'm really happy to talk with you, Karina. Thank you for, for reaching out. I, I love your energy and I'm excited to, to dive into this conversation with you. Yes, uh, I think you are a person that uh, had uh, a lot of uh, breakthroughs uh, in life and uh, I'm so excited to hear all about it. Uh, I heard uh, some little things uh, from uh, a video with uh, Tom, but I need to hear more. And uh, okay, so let's start from uh, the beginning of your life. Uh, how was your childhood? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... Um... Well, growing up for me, I was I was always very curious to understand like what I'm doing here and like what is my whole purpose for being here. So that um, that curiosity mm, it, it it led me to a life of um, adventure. <laughs> I had a really fun life, but it also took me down some some dark paths as well, like some dark roads that I uh, that my curiosity led me to. So I experimented a lot with um, with different like psychedelics and, and drinking and drugs and um, but then I also picked myself up and um, ended up traveling the world trying to find meaning and trying to find answers and um, yeah studied Buddhist monasteries and learned how to meditate I think that was probably the most helpful thing was coming home to myself finding myself and trusting myself so lots of lots of fun adventures. <laughs> I, I heard uh, about that uh, meditation in the monastery at the, your interview with Tom, uh, and you say how you uh, you were asking, you were uh, in that meditation with the, uh, the thought, who am I, right? And mm -hmm. uh, you found out that uh, you are love. Uh, what was this feeling? How was this feeling? Yeah, that feeling. Um... In the meditation, just sitting with it, it's 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 this very powerful feeling and a very and a very peaceful kind of patient feeling, like this this feeling of unconditional love. It's just it, 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 and the interesting part about it is that I had felt this way before. I had experienced this. I would call it I've been blissed out. You know, like I get in meditation, I'm just blissed out. I'm like, wow, it feels so good. And I before I would interpret it as wow, I'm so loved. I'm loved. I'm loved by source, universe, whatever you want to call it. Like I'm taken care of and I'm loved. But this was the very first time where it was different than that. It wasn't like something or someone was loving me, but it, instead it was, no, I am love. So it was kind of stepping away from the duality and into the oneness of it all. And that's what helped me to kind of, to to not have to look outside of myself for anything or person to to give me something, but that I can actually bring this um, bring this out of myself and give it to others. Yeah, sounds great. Mm -hmm. um, what you are saying makes me to think of uh, my life and my spiritual journey. Uh, the points where I, I think most of us find it uh, difficult, and maybe. Uh, is the thing that uh, puts uh, the bigger obstacles is the relationships with others. Uh, I heard in the interview, Tom was saying to you, you always search for the prince with the white horse. <laughs> I am the same. And uh, Oh, yeah? Yeah, exactly. And I, I think that most people who are on this path and uh, they want to become love and they need love, um, they actually search also in their lives for their other half uh, and the perfect prince or the perfect princess. Uh, and this is somehow makes things difficult, uh, but we can't let it out from our journey, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. yeah and, it's, it's, go ahead. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, well, it's built into us. Like it's, it's, in, it's part of our biology because, okay, yes. Like ultimately the big picture, I am love. You know, I am this great force, this life force energy. And I'm also now experiencing this reality, this kind of 3D reality with time and space and I'm playing a human character. Okay. So this human character has constraints on the, 
the totality of what I am, um, I'm here and I've kind of now confined to this, this, this human player, this woman that I'm playing in this reality. And that woman that I'm playing comes with all these, 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 these desires, these um, instincts that come with being a human. And one of those instincts is to mate with somebody, with a, a male, and, and then to reproduce and, and make babies. That's an instinct that I have. So we do, as human beings, we come here, we want, we crave, we desire, we need, biologically, we need to be with someone of the opposite sex to, in order to reproduce. I mean, now it's changing and now there's obviously, it doesn't have to be somebody of the opposite sex. But we have that crave, that desire to be with somebody for connection. Yeah. Yes. So. And how we can make this uh, this need and uh, um, how we can go out of toxic relationships? How can we attract uh, better persons in our lives? Uh, I heard on that interview that you went out of a toxic relationship, which is very hard to do, right? Uh, yeah. what, what helped you on that? Uh, what, uh, what can you advise people uh, how they take the courage to go out of something like that? Hmm, that's a really good question. How to get out of toxic relationships. Um, personally, I mean, there's, there's so much information out there how to do that because um, so, so many people experience toxic relationships. Uh, this was actually my third toxic relationship. So for me, it took me a few times <laughs> to finally get the lesson. Um, and, you know, the, the lesson keeps coming back until we finally get it. And, and how, I, how I learned it or how I got myself out of that situation, I know I need to take, I need to take um, credit for it because ultimately I made the choices that got me out of it. I also feel that the, it, what, there was some kind of like divine intervention that played a role that, uh, yeah, that I had support, I had help. Um, in the form of synchronicity, right? So I think- Tell us about it, come on. <laughs> it's the first time I hear something like that, that uh, someone felt that there was a uh, divine help. Uh, yes, please. Mm -hmm. like that if you want. <laughs> yeah, because so in the relationship, um, I was with I was with somebody who who I believed to be this incredible man. Um, that's who I believed him to be, even though like there. <laughs> if you weren't in my situation, you were looking on the outside in, you'd be like, that is not an incredible man. <laughs> he does not, he does not treating you respectfully. But I couldn't see that because I was driven by my needs, my desires and my instincts that weren't helping me in this case, um, to the point where I distorted reality and I made it, I turned reality into what I wanted it to be. And I only saw what I wanted to believe in. Um, and so I was, I was really hooked into this. Like I was, stuck in this relationship and now that I'm out of it I've come to understand the dynamics it was a trauma a trauma bond that was formed and that's caused through intermittent reinforcement um, so I was stuck in this like physiological addiction in this toxic relationship and again I say the only thing that pulled me out was divine intervention because there was nothing there was like I couldn't I couldn't see the light of day I, I was so indoctrinated in the belief of I have to stay with him and love him because if I leave him, then I'm not, I'm not practicing unconditional love. And I have to honor him, honor our relationship because I made a commitment to be with him forever. And so I'm, I didn't want to break that commitment and I did everything I could to, to stay. So the divine intervention was, um, so it turned, it turned um, abusive um, verbally and then, and then physically. And after the last incident with the um, physical assault, um, the next day I, I was just in bed. I couldn't move because it was like it, I was injured uh, quite bad. And so the next day I was just in bed and normally, and then, and he was there for a part of the day and, you know, we're talking and I'm saying to him, we're going to get you therapy. We're going to get counseling. I, I've already got, you know, a therapist lined up. Um, we're going to make this work. And he, and he was crying and he was upset. But then the day after that, I already had an appointment booked with our, doc our doctor to talk about bipolar disorder, which I thought he had. And then in the evening, I had another appointment scheduled. It was already booked. And it was for me to go and speak on stage and share my story about um, 
about my past and moving through uh, challenges. And I wouldn't have gone to these things if they weren't already pre-booked. I would have I would have just stayed with him and stayed in the relationship. But because I already had things that were pre-booked and I had a commitment to follow through with those things, um, it helped me to get out of this trauma bond that I was stuck in. So that talk that I gave that that, that following two days after the incident, I, um, I had to follow through because I had all my friends committed. They bought tickets and I didn't want to... I didn't want to just not show up. I wanted to be loyal to my friends. So I went, I ended up going, giving the talk. And that talk was, was so, I was so real and vulnerable. And I just showed my true colors to, to everybody, you know, I mean, it was recorded. It's online now, like anybody can see it. And it was me at my lowest point, you know, it was right after this toxic, it was in still at the tail end of this toxic relationship. I was like 20 pounds overweight. I just looked so disheveled. I was, no, I was, at, I was at my bottom, and and again, I was able though to stand in it and be like, okay, here I am. This is me. Love me or hate me. This is who I am. And you know what? I actually I like myself enough to be able to just bear my soul and put it out there. And that was so empowering for me to do it. Also because I had the support of my friends there, that it carried me through and helped me to, to then disengage from the trauma bond and leave that toxic relationship. So that's how I got out of it. But I know everybody's situation is different. Um, but, and it doesn't just end there. Then it's like the aftermath that you deal with from a toxic relationship, which I'm sure, I mean, if you are in a similar pattern, you probably experienced some of the th same things as like the recovery from a toxic relationship. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, and I believe that uh, uh, mostly the empaths uh, attract people like that uh, because that people uh, need attention and uh, we as empaths uh, uh, give a lot of attention. So I think we are like uh, a very, uh, you know, tasteful bait for them or something, you know. Uh, yes. Uh, but so two points here in what you said the one is that uh, okay how uh, we can uh, see that is not the problem the unconditional love uh, you said uh, and you are right that uh, uh, we think that we have to stick in that relationship in order us to give unconditional love uh, and there we lose the balance right Mm -hmm. uh, how we can uh, see if, uh, uh, you know, it happens to me too sometimes and I, I take myself and, okay, now if I leave, I don't give unconditional love. Uh, if I stay, I don't give to myself unconditional love. What's going on? You know, mm -hmm. uh, this is the confusion, I think. Um, so what made you to, to recognize that uh, subtle uh, difference? What helped you on that? Yeah, how, how, what's like, where did the discernment come into play? Like, how am I able to identify whether it's coming from a place of unconditional love or if it's coming from a place of, of, of neediness? Because the opposite, if I'm giving to somebody and I'm expecting something back from them, that's not unconditional love, right? That's, that's got conditions on it. So that's actually coming from a place of neediness. It's like, I need you to love me. So in order for you to love me, I'm going to love the crap out of you. I'm going to love you so hard that you're just going to want to love me. Um, and that's codependency too, right? Like that's, yeah, that's not yeah. a healthy relationship. And, and it's so, it's so subtle because I didn't, you know, I didn't go into the relationship thinking, oh, I'm going to love him so that he loves me back. I just went into the relationship blind thinking, oh, I love this guy. Oh, and he loves me too. This is amazing. But I didn't, you know, yeah, and then we yeah. get caught up in the whole fairy tale in yeah we get caught up in in the feelings and and the physiological addiction is what i, I see it as now um, i don't see that as love and now i'm coming to understand that this whole concept of love falling in love with somebody that's actually um the traditional way of looking at it is unhealthy it, we shouldn't fall for anybody like if we fall down that implies that you're falling down you're getting hurt you're going into something down be below you and then you've got to pick yourself back up. But to be with somebody that it, where it's a healthy dynamic, we, we shouldn't have to like trip and fall. We should actually like meet each other at the same level and then lift each other up, inspire each other to, and bring out the best in one another. 
that's something that's healthy. That's, that's something that I'm looking to co-create now in my life. And, and I feel like I am, and it's so, it's so different. It's so different from anything I've ever experienced. Um, because I've, I've perpetuated this pattern of being in dysfunctional relationships. And that's all, that was my normal, a dysfunctional relationship, you know, somebody yelling at me because I came home late, or, you know, getting upset because I didn't spend enough time with them like that to me was always normal because I saw my parents grow up like that. And I saw other relationships around me like that. People arguing and disagreeing and just um, being in it for themselves, really, you know, not, not seeing, not being there for the other person. Um, so how do your questions, like, how do I discern between whether or not I'm loving from a place of unconditional space or I'm loving from a place of, of neediness? How do I discern the two? I'm learning right now. <laughs> I'm learning what it feels like. I know what doesn't work. And so now I'm looking at what does work. Um, you know what it is? It's, it's, it's okay. So this is what it feels like for me right now. Like check back with me a year later. This oh, I'm hoping will evolve. But it feels like for me, um, kind of boring is like, it feels like, it feels, okay, there's this book I read. Um, actually, Marla, Marla Freeze. She yes. recommends it. Yeah. Um, I ordered her it, book yesterday. <laughs> you, oh, you read her book yesterday? I ordered it yesterday. Oh, you ordered it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, she's an amazing woman. Yes. And she recommended this other book. It's called The, the Human Magnet Syndrome. Okay. Ross Rosenberg is the author. And so he's a psycho, psychiatrist, I believe. Or uh, uh, he's a, yeah, a psychologist or a psychiatrist, not sure. But he helps people uh, through therapy. And he helps people specifically break free of this kind of codependent, narcissistic, dysfunctional relationship. But he doesn't refer to codependency as codependency because that, that implies somebody who's weak if you're codependent on something else. So instead, he calls it self-love deficit disorder. So you're lacking self-love. You've got a deficit of it. And so you go and you look for it outside of yourself from somebody else by by people pleasing by trying to make other people happy you're, you're, you're making them happy thinking that if I just love them enough make them happy then they're going to love me back and they're going to fill this self-love deficit right mm -hmm. that's a very unhealthy relationship so he explains it's like on a spectrum okay so you got a spectrum here and you've got these kind of highly selfish people on one side of the spectrum and then on the other side of the spectrum you've got these highly selfless okay so you've got the the givers so, yeah, so the givers are over here. Oh, can you see my hand? <laughs> givers are over here. <laughs> and the takers are over here, right? Givers and the takers. So the, the, the selfish and the very selfless. And it's on it's one extreme to the other. And then so if you're if you're a taker over here, you're like a plus five, let's say. That's the charge on the spectrum. If you're here and you're a giver, you're like, let's say like a negative five. That's the charge on the spectrum. Now in the middle, it's about it's a zero, right? It's very neutral, it's a zero there. So you can have somebody in the middle who like they give sometimes, but they also take sometimes like it's, it's a healthy balance of yin and yang, you know, they take and they give and they take and it's healthy. So when you have that and it's a zero charge, it's very neutral. It's, it's kind of like a, like a dull roar. Like it's, um, it just, there's not much charge to it. And so when you have two people that come together and they're, they're both like at a neutral charge, it feels like kind of boring. But when you have somebody who's a plus five, a, a severe selfish person, and you have somebody who's a negative five, uh, negative five, who's like this ultimate altruistic empath, always giving, and that's, that's a negative five, and two people come together, the charge is like, it's like crazy chemistry and fireworks, and you're like, oh my God, like I've never met anybody like this, it's so exciting. And, and it feels like this magnetic force that's bringing you together. And he says, if you feel that, run the other way because that is so toxic and dysfunctional but yet instead when you feel something that's like this like oh it's not i mean i don't know it's kind of boring there's not <laughs> much here yeah <laughs> he's like lean into that because that's actually healthy and so that's that's what i'm experiencing now i'm like okay i'm i'm, I'm bored a lot but <laughs> like i know it's so it's healthy um yeah it's, it's it's moving away from the extreme highs and the extreme lows yes yes yeah. And maybe we have, uh, all humans uh, uh, have got used to situations uh, 
you know, like uh, going up and down and our adrenaline and uh, all the reward levels of our organism that maybe this uh, an illusion that we feel uh, bored. Maybe it's just an illusion, just chemical stuff that we feel differently. And maybe we have to just uh, wait a bit and, uh, you know, get used to that. And maybe it's much better. <laughs> mm, yes. Yeah, good point. Yeah. I never really, I mean, yeah, when you put it that way, it is part of this illusion, right? It, it is. It's just more information that's coming into to our data stream, if you will. It's more um, more information that's coming into our reality. And we're, it causes us to feel a certain way, but we don't have to succumb to it. So it's part of our bi biology. Like, okay, I, like it's actually, it's a real feeling. I'm, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm experiencing the high, it's like my body is flooded with this dopamine, this oxytocin, and I'm like, whoo, feels so good. I love it. You know, when you're in that, that high state with somebody maybe who's manic or exciting or whatever you want to call it. And then when they devalue you and because they're selfish and they start putting you down or taking from you, now your body is, is flooded with cortisol, like the stress hormone. You're like, oh my God, what's going on? But then you're hoping to get back up here again. And then they start love bombing you and they hoover you back here and you're like, oh, okay, I feel good. But you're so used to this ups and, the ups and downs. It, it is, it's like, it is a neurological, physiological addiction to it. But you're right, we can break free of it. We don't have to be victim to that. Once we know what it is, we're aware of it, then we can witness it and we can be like, oh, that's the old pattern. I'm not going there again because I know that ended up in heartbreak and failure and I don't want to walk that road again. And then we change. That's how we learn, right? We experience things. We know what works, what doesn't work. And then we change, we course correct. So that's exactly. where I'm at right now is I'm course correcting. <laughs> exactly. I, I had a friend, uh, she was always in toxic relationships. And what amazed me was that this girl, uh, never uh, has read uh, spiritual books or things like that, uh, but uh, she was so fed up of uh, this kind of relationship that she told me, uh, today I go, I'm going there to meet him and end it. And she came back at my house when she told him that uh, it's done, you know. Yeah. She came with uh, pains at his heart from how hard it was for her. And she was saying, I'm dying now, Corinna, I'm dying, but I have to do it. And I now I, I know what I want. I, I need someone to be like this, like this. And she was saying that thing that she, she needs and now that she knows what she doesn't want anymore. And she was uh, going to, through so much pain, but she uh, conquered her fear. And in three days, uh, a guy appeared in her life. And now she's married, has a baby, and oh, really, they are perfect together for like now five years. And uh, I am yeah. amazed. I mean, she just put her intention out there, but she also with her act and her, you know, even if she was feeling like she's dying, uh, she had this courage. So she, she created this miracle, actually, you know, I'm always amazed about for the story. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, I want also to, to ask you your uh, opinion on something, uh, because I think I know your opinion, but I got uh, other Greek people that, because we're going to translate uh, this interview in Greek, to hear about that, because Greek people have a big problem, uh, biggest than other uh, nations, I think. Uh, we always have to look perfect. Uh, uh -huh. The perfect image for everything, we have to be the good kids, the good uh, people, the, the perfect, perfect, perfect. And uh, if uh, I talk uh, uh, to you, let's say that we go for a coffee, and I talk to you about a friend of mine, and he and he hears about that, that I talked to you, he's going to be very angry. Oh, you talked about me, you know, my image, and all this kind of stuff. But this uh, is getting much worse when it comes to a person who, uh, the job is coaching, uh, spiritual coaching, to helping people to be like you, you know, in this kind of work. Um, then it seems we don't have the right uh, to be mistaken. We don't have the right to have, uh, um, uh, we have to be perfect. We don't have the right uh, to have our problems or something. Mm. I remember when I did uh, uh, some sessions with uh, Tony Robinson, 
that uh, they had a, uh, an agreement online where I had to sign, uh, which was saying, don't expect from your coats uh, to, uh, to have already done the results that the ones that you came for. Uh, for example, if you want your coats to help you in your business, don't expect your coats uh, to have already results in uh, his business. Uh, you know, or if you came for your relationship, don't expect that your coach has already the perfect relationship. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. the coach was free to have a toxic relationship, even if he was helping you to get out of a toxic relationship, for example, yes? Oh. And, uh, <clears throat> here in Greece, you don't have this right. And uh, I, for example, in my work, uh, I help people uh, uh, get well, totally well from panic attacks. Uh, but I still have this fear inside me because I have the symptom from my heart, from the surgery that I have done in the past from my heart. And uh, my friends, uh, my teachers uh, say to me that I am a fake coach because I still have the symptom from my heart and I still have this fear. So, uh, and I see you uh, getting out there uh, and saying, hey guys, look, I, I have this uh, fear to go here right now. And, Let's support me. And <laughs> I admire that. I, I admire that you have this uh, courage to say, yes, I am a coach. I help you do that. Uh, I help you can carry your fears, but I have fears too. And I think it's normal, it's natural, because no one can say that has conquered 100% of all the fears, right? Mm -hmm. uh, talk to us about that a bit, how we, we also have the right to uh, so, you know, to be human, <laughs> right? <laughs> to experience this this uh, this life fully and to be ourselves, to embrace all aspects of ourselves that we're we're working on. Um, yeah, I think that's that's compassion, that's humanity. I so I go to therapy, especially like after this toxic relationship. I found a therapist, and. A couple of weeks ago, I guess we were talking and she said to me, um, I told her about, you know, my business and I'm like, oh yeah, and I'm, I'm doing this online program, working people through their fears and helping them to remove their self-limiting beliefs. And she says to me, oh yeah. And she's like, how's it going? I'm like, oh, it's awesome. I love it. And she's like, okay. She's like, and so do you ever feel like, like it's hard for you to practice what you preach or like, how, how are you with that? And I'm like, I think for a minute, I, I said to her, well, my thing, the thing is, it's not hard because I don't preach. <laughs> you know, I'm not sitting there going, this is the way you need to do it. This is how you should be. And no, I just, I, what I do is I, I share my journey. I share my struggles. I share my triumphs. I share it all. I'm, I just, I'm open and I'm honest. And People resonate with honesty. People resonate with authenticity. And for me, the approach is more about, hey, you know, I'm I'm in the arena and I'm, I'm, I'm getting my face dirty. I've got my sleeves rolled up, but I'm doing it. I fall down and I scrape my knees, but then I get back up. And I'm, if you, you guys want to come with me, get in the arena, let's do it. We'll, it'll be more efficient if we're all in here together, learning from each other, helping each other. So let's all do it together. And that, inc that attracts this incredible community of kind-hearted warriors, you know, where we're all like supporting one another and we're all keeping it real. And we all feel safe enough to show up and, and, and talk about our insecurities, talk about those things that we were taught as children never to talk about, to just suppress those, oh, no, don't go there because it made others uncomfortable. So we could never talk about our feelings, our true feelings, those feelings of, you know, in insecurity and inadequacy, I'm not good enough, I can't do it, all those things, we were always told to ignore it and just soldier on and pretend that you don't feel that way. But now we're, we recognize that it's really unhealthy to do that. Because if you, if you suppress those feelings, they're going to come up in dysfunctional ways, such as choosing partners who are unhealthy for you, right? That's because I suppressed a lot of things from childhood and I never dealt with it. And now I'm dealing with it because it's, I'm making all these bad choices. But those bad choices are helping me to learn to really ultimately look inside and find what it is that is causing me to do that. It always comes back to me. I'm the one who's, who's in charge of my choices. 
So yeah, it's, it's, again, it's easy for me to do because I don't preach. I just, I, I just practice and I share that out loud. <laughs> exactly. And uh, I, I remember uh, now a video of Bruce Lipton uh, who says, uh, what I'm going to tell you now, uh, it's a seminar, I think, at the beginning of a seminar. I said, what I'm going to tell you now, it will change your life if you practice it, but don't look at my life. I don't practice it. <laughs> so he pities it, but he, uh, he's not practicing, so he says, don't uh, expect me to have the results, uh, you go and have them, you know. Uh, right. so, and I think th this is a more healthy way. Uh, mm -hmm. So then, because then you don't even have for yourself high expectations, and it's unhealthy to have high expectations from yourself or from others. We are just all people who, okay, that, like you say, let's be the warriors and... Uh, uh, all together, yes, I like that all togetherness thing, you know, the we and not the I. And uh, uh, that's why I, I, I like it. what you do about uh, the low entropy thing uh, that you have as a charity or talk to us about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so low entropy is a, a charity here in Canada um, that gives people the tools, the space that's needed for them to to transform their fears, to really ultimately let go of these fears. First of all, the, state, the safe space to identify the fears and then to, to learn about themselves, to know that um, they can be themselves. It's okay to be themselves, to show up, you know, fears and all with everything and to, and to be held in this kind of safe container, um, this very compassionate, loving space where they feel accepted. Because ultimately what we all want is we all want to be accepted, right? We just want to be accepted for who we are. So when, when we can help others to accept themselves, it helps them to, to really start to accept who they are. Um, yeah, so it's a place to come and, and let go of fears and, and ultimately come home to yourself and see the big picture. Great. So it's a, just, it's a place where you meet or you have also people from online or... We do. So um, right now we meet in different locations all around the, the area that I'm in, which is it's around Vancouver area. Um, so we've got different groups that meet in different locations, uh, either weekly or biweekly, and they meet for um, different workshops or facilitated peer sharing circles. Um, and then there's, you know, a men's group and a women's group. We have a youth program, so teaching youth these concepts. And um, it's mostly done in person, but we do, we do have like, we do have one group that meets online um, for through low entropy. Yeah. Okay, that's great, eh? Mm -hmm. great. And uh, maybe you can, uh, you know, now uh, I told you the other time about that. Uh, we try to make uh, this uh, Facebook thing uh, like our own social media uh, for uh, raising uh, consciousness and. Uh, mm -hmm. You can have your own group there, your own team there. You are welcome to have there anything you like about lowering entropy. And so you can have also more people and from online, not only, uh, you know, there in Vancouver, maybe more people mm -hmm. need that. Because I remember uh, I was uh, in, in both, at the bottom also, psychologically from a relationship. When I first saw you uh, talking about uh, starting the, the lower entropy thing, and I was thinking, oh my God, maybe I can call Vanessa and ask her if they have their, uh, a room. Uh, <laughs> 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 I go there, and people can understand me, uh, you know. And I was thinking about that really, and um, I didn't know if it's uh, for online or for near, and I didn't know how to do it. Uh, so maybe you, you never know someone on the other side of the world uh, is feeling lonely and maybe through internet at least you know can help it's always uh, also good that yes. <laughs> yeah. yes yeah absolutely i mean in for my own private practice i i facilitate online programs and those are only online so and oh, it is only online. it's only yeah online. yeah the ones that i do privately for my private practice those are just online just because it's so much it's convenient and yes, people from yes. all over can join. So I get that. I guess for our charity, it was, it just, it started with community and like local community. And we, we are expanding. And I mean, the big picture is we want to go global, a global paradigm shift, moving people from fear to love. That's, yes. that's the ultimate vision, right? It just takes time to work our way up to that. 
Yeah, that would be great. And Vanessa, are you writing a book? I remember in a first side chat or something, it was uh, in a video with Tom, you were saying about the book. Yeah. It's, yes. I, oh, man. I, have, <laughs> I, I go like this, I'm like, oh, it's, it's, so I started it a few years ago and then I went away to a writer's retreat and I finished it. And um, I read it the other day and I was like, oh man, I need a, to work on this a lot more. <laughs> I wasn't very happy with my writing style, but um, yeah, I am writing a book and it's called My Big Ego. And it's basically like a companion guide to My Big Toe. It's, it's, a, it's a practical application where I've, I give real life examples of how I've used the concepts of My Big Toe in my life and, and how I've... Um, how I've used the concepts to kind of move through and let go of the ego and, and find my, actualize my true potential, what that journey has looked like. Yeah. yeah sounds great. Great <laughs> idea. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, but uh, I don't know, do you think that this writing uh, did help you? Uh, because I wrote a book without uh, uh, knowing any of the rules uh, of how to write a book or something. And, uh, it was like uh, in 49 hours, 4,400 pages. It was a huge download. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. And um, it was really exciting. I, I will send you the book. Uh, yeah. I, and, uh, I don't know. I believe what I, what I see is that uh, uh, if we go into the rules, uh, then it's what Tom says also about uh, meditation, uh, that he says, Try to not uh, do rituals and, uh, you know, be more free about that. Um, uh, for example, Tom was saying at last in uh, at Lung Lake Castle, uh, if uh, you always do meditation laying down, maybe after that you won't be able to do it when you sit. Uh, so try to have different positions every time or something. Yeah. And I think the same is with writing. Um, I never experienced uh, a writer's block. Uh, until now, because uh, I was like, okay, give it to me, and uh, you know, if I if I wanted to continue writing the book uh, after my own ideas, I would have, for example, uh, two different ways to go in the in the story. Uh, but if I was saying, okay, but now none of the two was the perfect was giving me that feeling. Uh, but uh, when I was saying, okay, uh, give it to me. Uh, what you want, you know, I surrender. Mm -hmm. uh, then it was coming a third uh, version that was wow, it was wow for me too, you know, uh, something that I would never think of. And uh, I think maybe this is the key, or you think that uh, this writing courses also help, the rules help, or? Hmm. Well, I'm not a, I wouldn't. I don't, yeah, I, don't class, I don't qualify as a writer because I mean I don't even I don't even have a blog that I consistently um, contribute to I um, but I hear what you're saying it's like I, and I think it's a little bit of both I think if you can have that that you know that open vessel to to download the information and then that's awesome but I don't think that most people are privy to that and um, I think that yeah, I think the information comes and then we have to be friends with our intellect and allow our intellect to kind of dance with the information and come out through our fingertips. I have, I have downloaded once, one time when I was writing um, and, and it was great. I was like, oh my God. And it was in meditation, actually at a Vipassana meditation. <laughs> and I wow. snuck in a book and a pen and I wrote it all down. I was like, oh, this is awesome. But it's never happened again. <laughs> Okay, and I think you can you you do it all the time anyway. <laughs> well, it's different though. Like when that information came, it it was so effortless, right? It, it was, and it and it felt like it wasn't mine. Like it felt like it was coming from a different source. Not filtered. Sense. Not filtered by our. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, so it's nice that you did you you have experienced that also one one very brief time for like ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you believe it will happen when we reach zero entropy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that's possible. Yes. I don't. Think, no, it's not possible. It's not possible. We never 
we always continue. There's always more to go. There's always more to grow. We'll never reach zero entropy. Uh, it would be paradise on earth or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying then. Okay, so once we, once we have, once we significantly decrease our entropy, what will our world look like? Oh, that's such a beautiful question. Yeah, it would be, it would look like everyone having this sense of safety, security, trust, mutual respect, you know, care to really care about others and to care about ourselves where people aren't beating themselves up. There's no depression, isolation, anxiety, all these mental health issues that so many of us are bombarded by that will that will disappear you know once we reduce our entropy and we instead remove the blocks and come from a place of love then that's what will permeate our reality a kind caring society yeah i'm excited i mean it, it is happening we're on our way there yeah uh, that that's how i exactly the way you describe it now i have the eyes in my eyes because this is exactly how uh, i imagine the I don't know if you know the, the project that I have, the magic project. Uh, magic project has uh, the, the fourth part is the magic place. And magic place is like a big city uh, where everybody is happy and they love each other. And <laughs> yeah, it's this dreamy world. And uh, I have some ideas, some ideas about how to do that there. But yeah, for now, we're not there yet. Uh, but yes. This. But we're headed in that direction. We're definitely on yeah. that trajectory. We're, we're, we're moving there for sure we're, you can see it, you can see the progression in, in humanity yes. like even in yourself probably right like from when you set foot on this planet to where you are now and the evolution of your soul that's happening at, on the microcosm as well as in the macro like it's a reflection of us yes so yeah. yes that's great yes uh, most people have their wake up call uh, in a, through a painful way right uh, why do you, do you think it happens, it has to be this way, and uh, what do you think are the biggest problems for uh, someone who is start awakening, or someone who is already in this spiritual path, uh, what problems uh, has faced? Yeah, I, so I had my morning session today with my online group, and we were talking about something similar to this, the, the program is called Level Up right? It's like, you know, level up from where you are now. And that's the thing is that when you level up, when you go to the next level, you see things that you've never seen before. You feel things that you've never experienced before. And that is so unfamiliar. It can be disconcerting. And we could, we can, we tend to sabotage ourselves and want to come back down to what is familiar and what is comfortable. So I think that's, that's the biggest thing to be aware of. So that once we know this dynamic and the pattern and what could potentially happen, we are more likely to be able to, 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 to cope with it and deal with it. So if I know that, you know, now I'm on the spiritual path, I'm awakening, I'm, um, my life is becoming so much better. I've got more love in my life. So now what are the kind of like pitfalls? Like what, what should you be careful of or what should you be aware of? I would say be aware of, potentially self-sabotaging yourself because you're so you're so not used to that feeling you're not used to that place and those old gremlins that say you know the inner critic that's like you're not good enough you don't deserve to feel like that it could self-sabotage you and bring you back down to what you're what you've always known to what's comfortable so that's something to be aware of because once you're aware of that though and it's so there's the author he called it the upper limit problem it, like you've hit your upper limit and now you're, you're past your upper limit and you're like, oh, I don't belong here. I better go back down here. <laughs> when you're aware of that concept, you, you know how to deal with it. You're like, oh, I, I'm not, I don't belong here. Yes, I do. Who says I don't belong here? I totally belong here. I deserve to get here. I earned my way. And you can deal with that problem because you knew it was coming. And then you can stay in this, this, this space where you've, you've leveled up. And from there, that becomes the new normal. That's what's comfortable. And from here, you can level up even again. And that's how we grow. That's how we learn, right? Yes, so, yeah. yes, exactly. And uh, I see a lot of people who hesitate to take the first step. Uh, for example, uh, they maybe need uh, psychotherapy or, you know, 
they don't take this first step. They think uh, only crazy people go to psychotherapists. Uh, uh, they think, uh, oh, I'm not sick. Uh, or uh, why to go to quads? I know what to do, you know? Right. The quads is not perfect. Look at his life, you know, I don't go there. <laughs> what can you say uh, to these people who hesitate to take that first step? Uh, how, well, I know that so oh too well because I was one of those people that was like can't tell me anything I know <laughs> what do you know that I don't know like I had a huge ego I was very adverse to like counseling or therapy and what are they going to tell me that I don't already know what are they doing so was, yeah I know that feeling um gosh what do you say to somebody like God, I'm putting myself in that, those shoes like what could anybody say to me that would that would help me to get out there and take the first step. Um, you know what it is. Okay, there's a saying that I I, I love, and it says, um, "I did not come here to teach you. I came to love you, and love will teach you." And so, what that means to me is that if somebody is there for me and just giving me unconditional love, I feel so safe to just to be myself and to look at myself and identify the things in my life that I need to change because I feel so safe. I'm like, that's okay. If I, if I find this thing about me that is not optimal, I, I can look at it and I can, I can be held in this loving, safe space because here's this person who loves me so much. And I know that they're not going to judge me no matter what, what dysfunction or what negativity I have inside. So I can actually feel now safe enough to look at it, look at it and do something about it myself. And that wasn't because somebody was in my face telling me I needed to change. It was the opposite. Somebody was beside me, loving me and, and, and showing me this, this compassion and acceptance for who I am. And because of that, it inspired me to find who I am and to start changing some things that I knew I could improve. So I think that's the best way is to love somebody that helps them. Yes. Just don't do it in a relationship. <laughs> because this exactly is what I was doing in relationships and it drives me to be and stuck in toxic relationships. And, and that exactly is the problem to do it or not to do it, you know, to be or not to be. Uh, because uh, if you do it in a relationship, then yes. <laughs> that's why, that's why you, your first, one of the first questions you asked was to discern between, yes. you know, when is the right... But it's not when's the right time to love and when's the right time to withhold love. It's more, wh where is my love coming from? Because it's always the right time to love. Love is the answer. It's always the right time to love. It's just what does that love look like? And is it, we've, we've confused conditional love, which is an investment. We've confused that with, with true love. So the, the codependency epidemic that we experience, the empaths, you know, that are always giving and loving, that's, I don't see that actually as, as love because what they're doing is they're, and we, because I'm in that too, is we're giving, but really secretly, we're hoping that we're going to get something back. We're giving, hoping that they're going to love me now and then I'm going to be happy. You know, we don't say it like that, but it's true. It's back there. Otherwise, we wouldn't, we wouldn't give to people who don't know how to receive it. Because we would be so self-aware that we would recognize that, oh, that's unhealthy. I, I shouldn't give to that person because it's only going to feed their ego and it's going to cause chaos. So I'm not going to give there. But because we've got our own insecurities, we don't see that. Instead, we're like, well, no, if I give to them, then they're going to turn around. They're going to be a good person. They're going to give back to me too. That's where we come from. And so it's, it's, it's like the same. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so subtle to recognize that. But um, that's where the deep self-introspection comes into play. Yes, that's very true. Yeah. And uh, uh, if you want to, to say to us where people can find you, uh, your, I think you have now the landing page. Uh, the challenge is still on for the landing page? I think it has like one more day. Tomorrow it wraps up. Yeah, what is it? The 31st. Yeah, so Friday is the end of it. Tomorrow it ends. But um, that's okay, because I hit. It, I needed like 100 subscribers, and I have 100 subscribers. But if you still want to subscribe to my emailing list, or my email list, then you can sign up through the landing page. Yeah. And you can, yes, and uh, we, you can give us the links, and I uh, will put them in the video here, uh, you know. Great. 
your links, the landing page, your website, and uh, your Facebook page. Uh, yes, it's totally new now, right? Yes, it's all new. Page. And uh, so uh, everything, the, all the, the details that people can find you, and of course, uh, I have a team on Viber, a group of Viber. Uh, people now uh, are expecting for this interview uh, so much. You know, they like you already from the uh, <laughs> yes, from the interview with Tom that we translated in Greek. And uh, we want you to come here and uh, when you want, of course, in Greece, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, to share some things that, uh, like with you and to share with people. And yes, will be Aww. will be great. Thank you, Karina. This is fun. Yeah, always. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I would absolutely love to go to Greece. So it will definitely happen. It's just a matter of time. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for connecting. I love connecting with you. you. I love too. your spirit, your energy. Yeah, maybe we can do it again. And maybe we can even uh, choose uh, a subject and uh, we can talk about that. Or we can ask people uh, from my group, from your group, about what they, um, some questions that they have, and we can answer them here or something, both of us. Maybe we can do a serial yeah. like that. Who knows? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Huh? Yeah, let's do it for sure. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yes, it would be great. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, nice. So, and uh, your uh, basic uh, web page is vanessavideski.com? Yes, that's right. Just my name. Com. Okay, I will put everything, all the links under this video. Okay, so, love you, Vanessa. Thank you so Aww, much. Love you, Karina. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank I you. Thank you. <laughs>